Now, there are a lot of people who uh, push back against the possibility that President Trump might have made a deal with some of the uh, Russian government to help win the White House. Now, that is uh, looking into that is actually part of what uh, Mueller is looking into. He's looking into possible financial crimes like money laundering, bribery, and, and the like. And uh, this is also one of the reasons that Manafort is, uh, I'm sorry, that Mueller is leaning on Paul Manafort so heavily. He wants to find out if Manafort, using his connections uh, with certain oligarchs, was, was privy or helped set up any sort of financial deal. Now, a lot of those pushing back on Russia correctly say that it's a distraction from the failures of, D of the DNC and Hillary Clinton. Now, that is absolutely true. This, the Russia investigation, all the Russia stuff, does provide some very nice and helpful cover that does allow the DNC to get away with not having to examine uh, the failure of the neoliberal wing of the Democratic Party. In fact, recently, since the election, there's been a lot of uh, people going out there from different uh, centrist think tanks. The uh, last one I read was from Third Way. And they're like, they go in, in, and talk to people and they do these reports. Oh, and turns out the reports are like, it looks like the American people love our neoliberal centrism. Uh, and all they want is for people to meet in the middle, in the centrist middle, where big government is bad. They don't want Bernie Sanders policies. All right, that's the conclusions that they come up with. Well, that's not true. Now, they come up with these conclusions and they tell all the Beltway Democrats uh, this in order to basically say that, hey, man, we don't have to change. And I pointed out how cable news is more than happy to help bury the failure of the Democrats under the Clintons and their paid consultants that bungled the election as long as they get the money they have and, and have no change in that system. Now, nonetheless, right, I believe that these two things can be true at the same time. The Democrats are definitely using Russia to deflect from their own failures, and it's inherently possible that Trump had help in the election in the form of Russian bots and propaganda. These two things, as I said, they can be true at the same time. Now, the reason I believe that that is possible, that there is a deal because of certain piece of, pieces of evidence that I think constitute uh, uh, or that indicate that there is that deal. Now, I have to warn you that this evidence to me is circumstantial, which is why it is a, only a belief and not set in stone, which means that the proper evidence or it can actually change my mind one way or the other. Now, regardless, when you look at what I've seen, uh, it does seem pretty compelling. Now, before I get into that, does that mean that I believe in every Russian story? No, absolutely not. I actually think that there's a lot of uh, room for skepticism of every story coming out about Russia. There's been a lot of retractions in pieces like the New York Times. Now, one of them that is absolutely ridiculous is the Russians using Pokemon Go to influence voters. That's ridiculous. That is both ridiculous and completely untrue. Uh, and now there's a new story about how supposed Russian trolls posed as members of Standing Rock. Absolutely, utterly ridiculous. So, with those kind of stories out there, it's only natural that people are not going to be very, very willing to believe in any story that involves Russian activity in our election. But again, I still think that there's a good possibility that they did do propaganda to help Donald Trump and that Donald Trump, I believe, owes him uh, or owes them in return. Now, uh, one piece of circumstantial evidence uh, comes from Trump's seeming inability to not only criticize or not criticize uh, uh, Vladimir Putin, but his flat out refusal to enforce the sanctions that he had recently signed. Now, according to the Daily Beast, the administration has since blown past an October 1st deadline to implement new sanctions overwhelmingly passed by Congress. Now, the legislation, which was approved overwhelmingly, as like I said, by both health, uh, houses of Congress, put sanctions on Russia and codified existing ones over its election, uh, supposed election meddling and incursions into Eastern Europe that have drawn condemnation from the U.S. and its allies. Now, I want to talk about one of the sanctions that had actually been there for a little while, uh, and this was the uh, McGinsky, um, or the McGinsky Laws. It was created after the death of a man named Sergei McGinsky. 
Uh, now, this guy was a Russian lawyer who died in prison under mysterious circumstances. As Mother Jones reported, uh, Magninsky was working for a Moscow law firm, Firestone Duncan, which was representing a London-based hedge fund called Hermitage Capital, Capital Management. Now, that company in 2007 was raided by the Russian government. Now, uh, this is where Bill Browder comes into the picture. Now, Bill Browder has recently been in the news. Uh, he was somebody that actually was trying to get into the United States um, and was blocked because Russia put out an Interpol uh, report on him. Now, he is allowed to come into the United States after all, uh, but it was very curious. So what exactly did Bill Browder do? Well, Bill Browder was um, heading the hedge fund called Hermitage Capital Management. And what he had done is that he had asked Meninsky after the raid to investigate the reasons for that raid. Now, the request led Meninsky to uncover a massive Kremlin-linked tax fraud scheme involving 23 companies and hundreds of millions of dollars. In short, corrupt law enforcement and tax officials used documents seized in the office raid to draw up fake charters, transferring ownership of Hermitage companies to a known criminal. Officials then filed three lawsuits against those fake companies for breaching contracts, which were themselves falsified, and the judges in the three suits awarded the damages totaling exactly $230 million. Now, those fees, those, those judgments, essentially ruined his company. Now, uh, when both Browder and McGinsky reported their findings to Russian authorities, they ended up filing uh, multiple criminal complaints. Now, McGinsky testified against the police officers who raided Hermitage, uh, Hermitage's offices, and a couple of weeks later, he was arrested in Moscow, charged with tax evasion, interesting, and jailed. While in jail, he was pressured to give evidence against Hermitage in exchange for his freedom. When he refused, he was kept in jail for 11 months before his death. Now, that's textbook government corruption right there. Speak out against that corruption, and then you're going to find yourself in jail. Now, that's not the worst of it. A 2011 investigation found that Magninsky was beaten by eight guards and then denied medical attention as an ambulance stood outside the prison for more than an hour. Even worse, charges against one of the prison doctors were eventually dropped, while the head doctor was acquitted of any crimes. And in 2012 and 2013, McGinsky was posthumously charged for a second time and convicted with and convicted of tax evasion. This is the first posthumous prosecution in Russia's history. They did not like this guy. And they went hardcore after him. And it was clearly a case of state-sanctioned murder, all because he had the goal to stand up against a corrupt government. Now, after that case, President Obama and Congress decided we're going to put some uh, sanctions on Russia, as well as after their annexation of Crimea. Now, fast forward to Donald Trump, who's like, eh, sanctions? Not going to enforce them. And I'm not going to enforce a fresh new round of sanctions at all. In fact, they even fought against part of the sanctions bill the biggest one would give Congress the authority to review any attempts by the executive branch to unilaterally roll back or ramp up any sanctions. Now, you would naturally need congressional approval to do sanctions, and I'm actually in favor of that. I don't like unilateralism. I think we should give some of the power back to Congress. Now, what's interesting is he signed these sanctions already. Well, if he didn't like them so much and he didn't plan on enforcing them, then why did he sign it? Well, it turns out that it had so much support in Congress... It was veto-proof, and he was basically forced into signing it. He had no choice. But since he was forced into signing it, he wasn't exactly forced into implementing it because, as I said, he still has not. Per the legislation, the administration was required to issue guidance by October 1st on how it was implementing the sanctions against Russia. That process includes publishing a list of the people and organizations who will be targeted by the sanctions, which are primarily aimed at Russia's defense and intelligence sectors. Now, again, he still hasn't done that. And of course, Congress is kind of pissed, but there's little they can actually do. Now, I wonder why he is so adamant in not enforcing those sanctions. I mean, look, if you're worried, oh, it's going to start a war, it's going to start a war. No, I I'm not worried that it's going to start a war. I would actually be worried if he was going to war. Now, some are actually calling for war. Now, I don't agree with that. I think sanctions are absolutely fine, and we should stick to that because they actually do work. But I realize that for some people that this 
isn't enough to even get you to wonder, and I understand that, right? Nor is the fact that Rex Tillerson, uh, Secretary of State, was picked basically, I think, in order to try and get an oil deal with Russia worth billions of dollars. In fact, that's exactly what ExxonMobil was going to do before those sanctions were put into place. And that Vladimir Putin himself said, hey, don't criticize Donald Trump. According to Russian state media, TASS News, he said, Mr. Trump was elected by the American people. And at, la and at least for this reason, it is necessary to show respect for him, even if you do, uh, do not agree with some of his positions. He also said that inside the country, disrespect is shown for him. This is a regrettable negative component of the U.S. political system. And he also added, he won honestly. Okay, man. Yeah, totally. Oh, I totally believe you, Vladimir Putin. You're just a stand-up guy. Uh, <laughs> totally credible. Now, is this 100% proof? No, obviously not. Any proof, if, it's it, if, it, if it does exist, will likely come from the results of the Mueller investigation. Now, it's entirely possible that there is a some sort of financial deal. And it's also possible that there isn't a financial deal, and all this is just speculation. However, this a, 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 a possible financial deal would be corruption. Now, I've said before, the U.S. is a corrupt government. We do have a corrupt government. And the government of Russia is also super corrupt. Now, the difference is that we've legalized our corruption through campaign contributions in almost every way, except when the money comes from foreign governments or foreign nationals. Now, any information or action, whether it be paying trolls or putting out negative stories about a candidate or even giving opposition research to an American campaign would be a campaign contribution which would be against U.S. law. Now, we still at least have laws against that so far. Um, so, you know, we should not get uh, foreign nationals or, or, or foreign governments being able to make campaign contributions and influence our system on their behalf. Now, we also have still have laws against quid pro quo between foreign governments and American political campaigns. Now, if there was a deal... It would fall under either one of those. It could be there isn't a deal, though, and, and Trump just really, really likes Russia. Who knows? Or perhaps Putin on his own decided he wanted to influence the election, which would make sense. And that's certainly possible, especially when you look at what happened with the Uranium One scandal going on now. It's possible that Putin wanted to impact both sides. And that makes complete sense. Play both sides against the middle. I and mean, look how much money Russia paid Bill Clinton. Over $500,000 in speaking fees. It's, like I said, corruption on both sides. But whatever it is, we shouldn't discount the possibility that this exists just because the DNC is deciding to use this investigation as a convenient shield. There's no doubt in my mind that the DNC and the camp Clinton campaign failed miserably and still would have failed miserably, even without Russian interference. That is not the Russians' fault, okay? They didn't lose the, Hillary, uh, lose the election for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton lost the election for Hillary Clinton. But that doesn't mean that the corrupt, uh, you know, that doesn't mean the Russian government isn't corrupt and that they're not innocent either. It can be both. Let's just keep an open mind and try to be rational about this and take things uh, and facts as they come. That's all I'm asking. And again, I know all of this was my speculation. Uh, doesn't mean it's true, but that's just what I see. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.